Hello and welcome to Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel. I'm Lisa and today we're going to take a look at the newly released Juicy Die Set, chat about the magic mushrooms now available at Whimsy Stamps, and I'm going to share a few tips on cleaning and organizing your Whimsy Stamp stencils all while creating this cute card. Now if you're new to the Whimsy Stamps channel, please hit that subscribe button and set that notification bell to stay in touch when new content is posted. Here are the supplies we'll be using throughout the video, and of course, I'll add other things along the way like inks and glue, and then we'll touch on those as we go through the video. Now, I have my colored cardstock, the Juicy Die Set, Be Awesome Clear Stamp Set, the Honeycomb Drip Stencil, my favorite, along with the Magic Mushrooms. Putting some of this to the side for now, let's go ahead and check out this fun Juicy Die Set, and I have a sample card I want to share with you. There are three large dies with drips in this set, one of which has a straight edge across the top, and the other two have a fun wavy edge. Now the longest die is approximately three and three quarters of an inch long, and the shortest is right around three and a half inches long, and the dies are two and three quarters of an inch wide once they're cut. These dies are great for creating paint drips, dripping goo for Halloween, icing for dessert themed cards, there are so many possibilities with these. I used them to create Dripping Jam and paired it with the new Sweet Strawberries Clear Stamp Set on this slimline card I created. So let's get started on our slimline top fold card. Now top fold cards are my favorite, but if you prefer a side fold slim, slimline card, skip this step. The cardstock I have here is a heavyweight black cardstock, and if you're going to create this top fold, I recommend the heavyweight. There is one piece here that measures three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches long, there on the left. And on the right, we have a piece that is three and a half inches wide by nine inches long. Now we're gonna take the nine inch piece to the scoreboard and score it at the half inch mark. We'll run our bone folder over it several times to create a tight crease. Now once I have that crease created, I'll open it up and I'm going to cut each corner on an angle with my scissors. I'll apply my Barely Art glue to the tab I just created and align both pieces to make my card base. And then I'm going to open this up and set it to the side to let it dry. Now whenever you create a card like this, make sure that you leave it open while it dries so in case any glue oozes out at the top it won't glue your card shut. And I also want to let you know that Barely Art Glue is now available in the Whimsy Stamps online shop. I love this glue. Um, when I first started crafting I was not crazy about glue. It always made my paper do weird things, right? But glue has come a long ways since those days. And I find myself grabbing this Barely Art glue a lot more than my tape runner nowadays. As the card base dries, I'm going to stencil a honeycomb background using the magic mushrooms and share my first impressions. Now keeping in mind this is the first time I'm using them, and Whimsy Stamps now carries the magic mushrooms by a Canadian company, Local King Rubber Stamps. While I work on this background, I thought I would share some of the knowledge I gained from watching Local King Rubber Stamps videos on the Magic Mushrooms. So when you get them from Whimsy Stamps, you're going to get 10 of these Magic Mushrooms and the plastic case for each one. When I ordered mine from the company Local King, I actually got some acrylic uh, stands that you see there. Mine are set down in those acrylic stands. Now I store all of my little plastic cases in this clear acrylic divider from the Dollar Tree that, and it holds all of my little plastic containers perfectly. Now because I purchased mine from the Canadian company, I did get the acrylic stands and I just leave mine in the stands. Now here's something that I learned that I thought was very important for me to share here. When you uh, first start to use these, let me tell you, these are a sponge. And when you first start to use them, Lisa, the owner of Local King, says you need to spritz them with water so they grow a little bit. You want them damp, not wet. So just like in her video, I spray them with some water and then I press down lightly to get the water down into them. 
Your hand should only feel the moisture in the sponge. You don't want it to be dripping with water or leave water behind on your hand when you touch it. If you happen to get too much water in them, take a dry cloth and just dab the sponge into the dry cloth to remove some of that excess water. When you're done with your sponges, you need to let them air dry completely if you're going to store them in the little plastic containers they come with. If you don't, you run the risk of them mildewing and you do not want that. So make sure that you're letting these dry 100% before you store them in the plastic container. So let's go ahead now and get into this. So when I'm watching her do her video, um, she takes the sponge like I'm doing here and she runs it across the dye ink pad to lift the ink. And as you can see, it picks up quite a bit of ink, which I was excited about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the pouncing technique and I'm going to pounce the ink down over my stencil and into the paper. And I like the way that it's coming onto the paper. It's not leaving any round marks. The heavier you press down on the sponge, the heavier the application of the ink is going to be. But you might also, starting out, end up with that little round um, sponge mark that you sometimes get. So I went light-handed and avoided that completely because you can layer your ink, right? So I'm going to continue just pouncing this down the stencil and it does give a different look than a blender brush does. Everything has a purpose, right? So this gives a very soft look compared to a blender brush in my opinion. Now, if I'm gonna be 100% honest with you in this video, I would say I would be more apt to use these with my dye ink and I would be more apt to use a blender brush with my Distress Oxides. Now, I haven't tried these with Distress Oxides because I only have this one set of them at this point. I probably will go ahead and purchase another set from Denise so that I can try them with the Distress Oxides. I'm sure they work beautifully with them, but because I only have this one set, I've dedicated it to my dye inks only. For that reason, I say I would use, if I were going to purchase one set, it would be dedicated to my dye inks because these work beautifully with dye inks. So let's go ahead. I've used um, the orange with my peanut brittle ink from Memento Dye Inks. And now I'm picking up some cantaloupe onto my yellow magic mushroom and I'm just pouncing it down over the stencil and it goes down easily. And the one thing that I noticed that I really liked about this is you could use one ink color and create a complete fade in your stencil. Um, I'm going to do more with these and more videos throughout the month. So you're going to want to be sure that you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out if you want to learn more about these. I thought that was very neat that you could take one ink and you could create a beautiful fade with your stencil completely down your slimline panel here with just one ink. So here you can see I'm just keep working down and I'm going to show you the result of me pouncing all the way down. And then let's move into talking about ink blending with these because you can use these for ink blending. They're not just for pouncing. So here's a close-up of that pouncing technique and you can see how soft that looks. I, I think it's absolutely stunning. Let's go ahead and talk about cleaning these real quick. So I'm going to move to a lighter shade of yellow. I'm going to quickly clean this off. You can see there's not much ink left on the sponge to start with, but I just sprayed a little bit of water on my microfiber towel and I'm working the sponge into that wet area of the towel to remove any leftover ink. And now I'm ready to go ahead and move into my lighter shade of yellow. So I'm gonna use a soft vanilla and I'm going to blend over this whole panel. And I'm telling you, I was so surprised at how easy it was to blend with this sponge. I actually stopped for a second. I didn't show that here in the video, but I actually stopped for a second and 
was just blown away. I, I thought that it would kind of have a drag to it. It wouldn't blend as easily as a blender brush, but I'm here to tell you it blends so smoothly onto that paper. I was so surprised. So here you can see I'm easily blending over the whole panel. Uh, one of the things that I watched the owner, Lisa, do was when she's blending, she actually grips the very top of her uh, sponge and it kind of stabilizes it a little bit more and makes that blending process a little bit easier. So I recommend that. And if that's going to be something I'm going to go more into detail with you in another video. I went ahead and I did purchase a second set of these from Whimsy Stamps. And uh, we're going to try these with Distress Oxides in a video coming up. But I do want to do a video and get more into blending techniques and using stencils and how to create a really fun background with these and show you the right way to hold on to that uh, sponge while you're blending onto your cardstock. I think that'll be information that'll be very useful because remember, this is just my first impression. So bottom line, my first impression is, would I recommend these to somebody? I absolutely would. I was so surprised at how well they blended on the cardstock. And I love the softness of that pouncing technique with them. And I just feel like there's a lot more to discover with these magic mushrooms. So let's go ahead and move into cleaning up our stencil. And I have a tip I'm going to share with you. If you have a soft bristled manicure brush, you can use those to clean your stencils. So I have a couple of extras around because when you buy them on Amazon, you usually get them four, six, seven, eight in a pack for dirt cheap. And so I always have extras. And what I do is I'll spritz my stencil with water and then I just run over it with my soft bristle brush to go ahead and remove any excess ink and then I just wipe it dry. Now, don't be scared to use alcohol to clean your stencils. Uh, sometimes along the bottom where the Whimsy name is and also the, the name of the stencil, I'll get some ink built up along there and it can be a little uh, tricky to get out. So I just spray it with some alcohol, take my same manicure brush, and scrub it and it picks that ink right up. I dry it and I'm good to go. So let's talk about how I store and organize my stencils while we're here. Now this is nothing new. You've probably seen other crafters organize their stencils in the Simple Stories snap binders with the six by eight pockets. This makes things so easy, but I have a trick that I haven't seen anybody else share that I found makes it super simple to organize and store your stencils and keep them nice and neat. I'm using these white dividers that I found on Amazon. These are dividers for comic books and I bought them 50 in a pack. They're about 11 inches by seven inches and I just end up trimming off the excess so that it fits into the pocket and I have plenty of room. Now for my six by six stencils, I just cut them a little bit shorter. And then for the larger stencils, the six by nine stencils, I leave them a little bit longer so they support the whole stencil in my binder. It sticks out above the top of the binder a little bit. I'm okay with that. That doesn't bother me because I store these in a cabinet right underneath where I work. You can see here, I have the large, long six by nine stencils from Whimsy. And because I have this divider in the pocket and it's cut to support the stencil, it's not flopping around. And what I do is I got a little bougie with my labeling and I used Avery removable labels. You hear me talk about those for masking. I'm tired of labeling stuff. And then when it's no longer um, something that's being carried by a company, trying to get the old label off so that I can reuse the space in my book became a hassle. And I said, you know what? I'm done with this. Let's use the Avery removable labels because they stay on until you're ready for them to come off and then they peel off easily. 
And what I did was I sat down and I typed up my stencils from Whimsy. I have a couple more left to do, but I typed them up and then I printed them onto that label paper and ran it through my toner printer <laughs> because I was going to get bougie and foil these with gold foil. And that's exactly what I did. And then I just cut them down to size and labeled each pocket. You don't have to get bougie with yours. It's something I was just doing, but um, I just had fun with it. So I'll have all this information linked down below for you. And you see how easy it is for me to flip back and forth through this album, no problem. And it's because I have those dividers in the pockets. And you can easily cut those dividers down with your paper trimmer. If you're still with me, I appreciate it so much. So let's go ahead and finish wrapping up our card and this video. I've added my stenciled background to my top fold slimline card base with Barely Art Glue. We're going to set it aside while it dries and we're going to go ahead and do some die cutting. I have three different shades of yellow cardstock here that I'm going to use with the juicy die set. And once I cut these out, I'm going to bring them back over and we'll do some ink blending with the magic mushrooms because I want to show you a trick to blending ink on die cut pieces like this. So now that we're ready to do some ink blending on our drips, one thing I want to point out is if you go in at these with anything, whether it be a sponge, a blender brush, anything, you run the risk of this smaller area here bending. So if you'll take a piece of masking tape and lay the whole die cut piece down on the masking tape and then ink blend, you won't have to worry about those areas pulling up while you're ink blending. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut a piece of my masking tape, lay the die cut piece down on it, and then do my ink blending. So while you're doing this though, you're going to get ink on the masking. And when you do, it's going to remove the stickiness. It doesn't end up on your sponge at all, but the ink does take away the tackiness of the masking. So you might have to, on the next piece, lay it the other direction so that it's laid down on the sticky part. And you may need to get a second piece of masking paper, but to me, it's worth it. I don't have to worry about those little areas, the drips. I don't have to worry about those bending or tearing while I'm doing this. And it gives me something to hang on to as well. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the Be Awesome sentiment from the Be Awesome clear stamp set onto my top drip. And I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink for that. You know, I love my Versafine Onyx Black ink for details. Once I stamp this, we're going to go ahead and put mounting foam on the back of all three pieces. And I do end up before the video is over actually coming in and coloring in that sentiment just so it matches all the rest of the pieces that I'm going to do. Now, because I've kept you here so long, I actually did this stamping and the coloring of the small images off screen. And trust me when I tell you, these images are small. They don't take much coloring at all. And I did run them through my scan and cut to cut them out. So we're going to go ahead and hop straight into me arranging these and getting them on the front of the card so we can wrap this up. So here you can see I'm coloring in that top sentiment be awesome with my black Copic marker. I'm going to come in with round foam adhesives and small square foam adhesives to add all of my die cut pieces to my card. I say this every time I love dimension on my cards. If you don't like dimension on your cards, arrange everything and apply it with glue or tape. If you're like me and you're a dimension junkie, then let's pile it on because that's my thing. So once I have all the pieces in place, we're gonna bring in a white gel pen to add some details around the edge of those die cut pieces and it just gives it a little bit of life, bring, you know, a little highlights here and there with it. And nothing too complicated. I do a straight line and then I do two or three dots. And I just go around adding them wherever I feel like it needs a little something to maybe pull that area out and give it some attention. Once we have all of this done, that's going to wrap us up. Now, I want you to do me a favor and comment below. Do you like seeing all the extra information I've added into this video? 
like tips on cleaning your stencils or storing and organizing your stencils? Or would you rather me leave that completely out of the video and just go straight to the card making? Because bottom line is I'm here for you and I want the videos to be what you want to see. So let me know in the comments below if you like the extra tips and tricks or if you'd rather me skip over those. I really do appreciate you guys so very much. As always, I have my affiliate links down below. If you're interested in any of the products, all you need to do is click on those links and it'll take you straight to the product. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or reach out to me and I will be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. We really appreciate you joining us here on the Whimsy channel. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. We're also on Pinterest. Check that out. As always, please know how much I appreciate you. And until next time, please take care.